Hi, I'm Ikea, and today we are continuing our journey through Warlords of New York, our little guided tour. I'm going to jump back in right where we left off. I basically logged off at the end of the last video, as you can see also in the time played. And we're just going to pick up where we left off. Last time we ended uh, Theo Parnell. Uh, we did his tombs mission, but that did not conclude his manhunts. We still have one step of it to go where we try to decrypt the files that we got off of him. And Paul Rhodes is going to help us with that. And uh, I'm actually at the safe house uh, I want to be at as we're going to go to this police headquarter. And let's just jump into it right away. I haven't played this character at all, of course, uh, in between. That's why I also want to show it there that, uh, yeah, nothing's basically changed from the last time we were here. And we're going to just go conclude a Tio Pornell and then we're going to move into the the Vivian Conley manhunt where we'll be engaging with cleaners. Just gonna clear out everything along our way. The building's dark. We're gonna need to reconnect the power to track down Parnell's server. Hope and I have to get used a little bit to the AK <laughs> firing pattern again. It's been a while since I've uh, fired uh, AK without any... Um, so normally you would have some watch point, at least 10 stability and accuracy just from your watch points. Uh, most level 40 characters, if you're a 1k character uh, or account, then you have access to those. So it is uh, usually a little bit odd <laughs> going back to uh, a character again without any watch points and having to uh, deal with those old things again. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit cold starting out. I just jumped in right away. <laughs> Maybe I should have done a little bit of warm-up as I, my aim isn't uh, really dialed in at the moment yet. But uh, as we move on, that'll uh, improve, hopefully. And as always, I'm just live narrating, playing and talking at the same time. And uh, I will try to point out uh, all the things that uh, might be interesting. So we're assaulting here the police, uh, the police headquarters, which uh, were taken over by these Rikers. We're going to use the antennas on the roof of it to uh, get access to some server clusters to decrypt the phone from uh, Parnell. Time to find a way into the building. And uh, I'm actually checking, ah, I do have a grenade launch round. So one of the simple tricks here, so we open this door, that's not a trick. <laughs> that's just what is required of you. Normally you would have to go um, up these stairs on the left and go all the way up. Just to save a few seconds, you can uh, either grenade launcher or uh, throw a grenade or even eclipse shot would uh, do it as well. And once it's green up there, that means that uh, that there's a yellow junction box up there that we would have to normally shoot, but we destroyed it in that way and that gave us access to move on. I am also actually going to shoot that lock over there already, just because otherwise we'd have to shoot it in a second. And we're just going to run through here. In a second as well, I will uh, toss out my turret at a door. Uh, at that door, a Riker Heavy spawns. And uh, I'm just going to place my turret in a position that is just going to harass him and uh, hopefully turn him around. This is, these parts are all required. This is just to uh, get through here. And we're just uh, making fast time through it. I will just directly equip that, likely better than whatever I have. Yeah, so here I place my turret there, and that's just to turn the heavy that will come uh, through that uh, brown door. We interact with the elevator, we go over here, we interact here, and then he spawns. Oh yeah, he either gets shot in the back by my turret, or I he turns to my turret and I shoot him in the back, so... Then there's a few ads, and again, this being a solo run, it's throwing me off a little bit because now only two extra ads spawn, but uh, normally three spawn with uh, two player. Uh, with even two-player scaling. Yeah, that's. Uh, I wanted to reiterate again that while this is actually the run that I'm 
going on and this is the path that I would normally go. Normally, I would at least, again, just do that call for backup, use that system uh, to get somebody that is going to group scale me uh, up to level 39. So just try to get someone with, with that is already has watch and has a, can group scale you up. And yeah, that would make it so that I gain a lot more XP from everything. So from missions, from kills, everything would give me XP as if I'm my group skilled level, but my requirements stay my normal requirement levels. So I would gain XP as if I'm level 39, but my requirements for leveling would stay at, in this case for me, level 32, which I am. I'm going to toss my uh, turret up there. It's a really good place for it. It can't shoot uh, that doorway, but it can shoot all the other spots. And yeah, we're just going to hold position. We're protecting um, these arrays, basically. Not that any of the enemies actually shoot at them. They all just uh, shoot at us. But yeah, this is a hole in the fend. And yeah, as always with a run through here, it's all scaled to uh, story. So it's not hard. It's also single player scaling. So it's really, really not hard. At points, uh, so it's at 33% there on the bar. Uh, Paul asks us to interact with this uh, button. The next one will be around 75%-ish. And uh, after a while, you, uh, I have a, I just do it by feel almost. I'm going to put my drone on this heavy, harass him a little bit. Hopefully, my drone turns him around. I will actually take off his canisters. Not that it was really needed. I could just chest break him and just go through him that way. But, you know. Habits are hard to break. I'm used to <laughs> going for the tanks on his back. And we're just killing. I'm keeping a little eye on the bar at 75% uh, ish. It will prompt me to interact again. I'm actually going to move over here already a little bit. And this is also, yeah, the reason I use turret and drone. They aggro stuff, you, they make it easy to spot stuff where spo uh, stuff is. Well, it's closer to 80%-ish, or even 85%-ish by the look on the bar. And yeah, they do deal decent damage. Even though I'm not a normal player because I, of course, have them uh, expertise up to grade 20, so that's not a recommended thing to do, but uh, if you do alts a lot and do watch alts, uh, grading them to level 10 is actually, or to grade 10, um, is pretty easy. So that's not a bad thing to do, especially if you even do run to a drone, even periodically. There's one thing still alive. I'm trying to see if I can spot it. Oh, it's up there. That's why I couldn't spot it. And it's a sniper, as always. It's going to grab our loot. We're going to be pulled into an uh, end of manhunt uh, little cutscene. I am going to skip them again, of course. And then there's a little animation that has to play fully. And uh, we have to wait for that for this store to open. And yeah, that's going to trigger right about now. <laughs> yeah, so he is dead completely. We have completed this. This is unskippable, sadly. So yeah, we have completed Tio Pornell, and we're going to go next to uh, Vivian Conley. So what we could do here, and this is also the reason I go this path usually, is because from here we can go either... Uh, well, I'm about to hit the loading screen, I shouldn't pull up the map. After this loading screen, I will show it. So from here we can either go to the safe house. So if we were getting boosted, and with boosted I actually mean, I should actually explain that, that uh, we're getting carried by a level 40 character. So because otherwise it may be weird because we also, the boost is also the the, the thing that you use to either start at Vony or to jump to world tier five. But when we start talk about boosting through uh, warlords, through Vony, 
then yeah, that means that you're getting carried by a level 40 that is basically doing all the killing, giving you group scaling, uh, usually um, also with on a good build. So something like Eclipse can just easily run through all of these missions. There's a key chest there, but of course, uh, still no key chest. Um, oh yeah, that is boosting through Woni because yeah, there is no actual boost, uh, nothing in game or such that you can use to get through one you just have to do it and yeah when you're getting boosted and getting group skilled uh, you can do it in like two and a half hours uh, quite easily with just two man uh, there's even tricks to get it down to 45 minutes but that requires three people to boost one person basically which uh, some people do i if you have the people for it sure but usually we me personally we were uh, boost by um one person boosting three so in two and a half hours we would have three people gaining a watch alt and one person doing the carrying and then we would rotate the person that is doing the carrying so actually back there you see that circle that indicates um, a division point basically uh, the, the, you will see those uh, quite often that safe houses or places we go into will have that circle so we could actually go to that safe house and skip this um this prerequisite side mission but uh we're not going to do that because yeah i am not group scaling here i'm doing that again just to not be reliant on anybody so i can just do it in my own time and just you know take the time and talk and not keep anybody up but also these give pretty decent xp i can actually show it here now that we're in range this gives 50k xp where if i i don't have any <laughs> i don't have ah, actually well so a control point would get 75 but a control point is of course an attack and a defense so it's basically two activities so a normal activity uh if i had one on the map that i could like show these would be around 40 uh, ish k so this is a little bit more than an activity and uh, a lot faster also i want to show here so this is um earlier we talked about those fixed uh, drops so this sniper in front of me when i kill him he will always drop a high end so that's fixed. And uh, what he drops is uh, completely randomized. Uh, it can be basically anything. Um, it, um, it is always gear, so it isn't a weapon ever. At least I've never seen it be a weapon. We shall see in a second, maybe. Uh, I, uh, I surprise ourselves, maybe. But yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's an EPA, but this will always be a high end. So here it is fixed to be a high end. It isn't fixed to a slot. So I've had backpacks here. I've had every slot here, basically backpacks, chest, uh, knee pads, holsters. Uh, sometimes I've even had named items here. But yeah, this is always also fixed to be a high end. But the odd thing about this one is this is the only time that I know of that this happens uh, outside of instanced area. So those tutorial areas leading into. Um, the White House and it leading into that haven, uh, those are instanced. Here we aren't instanced anymore. Here we could have uh, group members with us. But yeah, it still drops a fixed item, which is uh, an oddity. So there we talked to, to that officer. Having done that, uh, we'll basically lead into that safe house. Uh, yeah, I just did that just for the little bit of XP now that i'm doing it solo basically but normally if you're getting boosted you would jump you would skip all four prerequisites uh well three well, one the one for the wall street for um for drag off is uh doesn't have a prerequisite that leads into the safe house the first side mission is basically the safe house itself but yeah for the other three you could just skip the prerequisite if you have a level 40 with you in the group uh, then they can basically jump to the safe houses right away because they have access to them already. So they can fast travel to those and also to missions once you basically put them on the map. And uh, you can then the players that are getting carried, getting boosted, they can uh, fast travel to the player and do it that way. And here we are heading in, talking to the community leader of this safe house, grabbing a few phones along the way so we don't need to stay and listen to this whole uh, whole talk once we get uh, out of here a little bit we get this uh, new side mission to go to this uh, jtf outpost and 
we're going to head over there and deal with the cleaners there, oh, uh, clear it out, and that will give us access to um, strand the tanker where we'll uh, end uh, Vivian Conley. <laughs> and uh, Isaac's uh, <laughs> is a little bit late with his portable device detected. We've already collected it a while back. And yeah, as always, I will grab some some of the cases along the way. Sometimes you get gear out of it. And yeah, here I am actually dependent on myself. Even on when I <laughs> do call for backup, I usually still try to gear up myself so that I still stay effective. A lot of people seem to think that uh, when you're getting group skilled or group level up, that you yeah that you cannot be effective at all that you're easy to kill but that's not true at all you just have to make sure so you are pretty easy to kill uh, easier than most uh, than yeah if you're used to a level 40 but you're not an easy easy kill but if you especially still have brands and um, red cores that or brands that just are from damage brands and red cores you can carry yourself i've been with uh shepherds so when somebody does a call for backup answers to a call for backup uh they're called shepherds uh, that is the in-game name for them as well and they have shepherd ranks but i've had shepherds that are that were all blue and they couldn't deal any damage themselves and i carried myself you know, we'll show actually this um, sniper lady she will run away actually normally but you can actually uh kill her like that <laughs> and uh, deal with her uh, that way she will still actually still spawn on the roof so normally it, it may it tries to make it look as if she's running away and that you're chasing her and then you'll fight her on the roof here i am going to shoot out that lock but i am going to run up here first because this voice file needs to play before we can in interact uh, and we need to go upstairs to make that voice file play and that's uh required for us to interact with the valve here that will let us close this water yeah i'm going to close it i am actually going to shoot this lock open there's a so this is that corridor we came in from mostly because i'm looking for weapons as well so if i get a better ar i will gladly equip it i don't mind the ak's but i'm quite uh i'm always thrown off a little bit by their uh, recoil that goes to the left instead of to the right like with most like with most weapons and yeah compensating to the left is uh, easier maybe for left-handed people but for right-handed person like me that is actually <laughs> annoying always it's basically it just feels a little bit off although i've uh, thought myself to really be able to and here's a cleaner box again and we also had one cleaner box downstairs as well actually but yeah we do not have any keys so no loot for us um but yeah I've, l I've taught myself pretty well to well the ak's as, as well but i've uh, i've kind of forgotten how to uh, run them basically and that's mostly because the takey bay came in and uh, the takey b is uh, uh, quite a better uh, ar in its stats it has basically the same accuracy and stability and such and pattern as the AKs, but it just does more damage, just more DPS. It doesn't do more absolute damage, so just not in its whole value, but just the DPS is just so much higher, both in its uh, burst and in its sustain. And especially with it having the Kingbreaker as well as its named uh, variant. Yeah, I bought myself a little bit too be able to use it effectively there i got knocked out of my reload and the reload on this ak's are uh, quite long so i had to sit through all of it again and again yeah the one thing you also always notice is you don't have those extra 10 uh, points in reload that a normal player with a watch would have or well a level 40 player with a watch would have and yeah those are you do miss them here we're locked into watching this echo for quite a little bit so i'm going to take that time to uh, do some inventory uh let's see what i get i am actually going to equip that weapon uh that will keep my backpack as is uh oh yeah i still have this uh, yal glove that was quite a surprise oh, yeah, we did get that um, high end let's equip it 
and uh, oh actually one other thing i should show here as well is when walker and harris came in they something bugged out with how they were added and on the chest and i believe also the backpack as well i don't exactly remember but definitely well you can see it here on the chest you only have the rand bonus where even a green piece like this would have a core attribute and a, a, a minor here it doesn't have any it just it doesn't even have the, the well it wouldn't have a mod slot because it's a green piece but uh yeah the green part it's literally only its brand bonus. It doesn't have its core. It doesn't have its uh, uh, minor, which is oddity. It's just weird that uh, broke in that way. And we got a god rolled uh, SOCOM uh, there. Uh, so these kinds of things also sometimes happens, and uh, you do still get uh, even on story mode that we are here. You do from time to time find uh, yeah god rolls, so to say. But yeah, it was on a weapon that uh, I will not choose to use. Here I'm rushing up here, putting my turret there because I know they spawn there. At least they do on <laughs> two man and four man. And uh, I hope they still do as well in, uh, in solo. And I'm just going to move over here, kill here. Hope my turret is doing some damage to stuff over there. And here I'm going to deconstruct my drone if it hadn't already timed out. And that's because this is one of those places the drone doesn't follow you through the store for some reason. Um, there are a lot of places like those and using a third drone after a while you will know where those are just because yeah, yeah it's annoying. You go through and uh, you don't get it. There you see me shoot out the backpack. It's, then after he does this whole animation, then his head is clear. And that is actually the way to quick kill those enemies. He also has two other weak points. Uh, those are just to disable his flame grenades. He has a grenade pouch on his his right leg. Us facing him would be the left, on the left side of him. And uh, he has a gas canister on his, uh, his right leg, our... No, his, his left leg when we're facing him uh, the right side. It's always difficult, of course, to, uh, to like visualize it like that, especially when you're not directly looking at them. But uh, if you destroy that one, then that is his, um, his flamethrower. And then he will swap to uh, just a regular uh, weapon. So there, we did that whole uh, side mission that has given us access to strand the tanker. And I'm just going to walk over there from there i know that there is a yellow junction box where i threw that grenade uh, that opens up uh, this door so and this is two weapon crates and seeing as i'm yeah still not happy with the weapon that we have here i i wouldn't mind swapping it out to something else one thing you notice as well if you look in the lower left the first time we get a stoner we do also get that attachment for it for its muzzle and uh strangely enough it is it does show as a um, as an exotic part. So yeah, we're just making our way through to sta to stranded tanker. Oh yeah, I know the way by heart, so there's no need to <laughs> put a marker. Also, the Isaac line here especially is very, very wonky if you try to follow him. Uh, Isaac will always try to lead you through main paths, basically. Sometimes he doesn't know of some of the alleys. Though I'm just looting that as well. I am actually also going to loot this as well. It's because it's on our way. And uh, let's head into Strand the Tanker. And yeah, this is one of those missions that I also quite like. It is just a little bit different uh, than... So most of the um, Warlord missions are closer to strongholds than just missions. And I quite like that. It is... They're a little bit more complex, a little bit longer. Some people quite dislike it. One thing I want to point out is when you interact with this, so normally everybody stacks up at these uh, at these garage doors, basically. But you can actually, so I will show it here as well. When I hit that button, that white door opens up as well. So one person or the people that stand by it can rush in really quick, a lot quicker than uh, the 
the garage doors will allow you to rush in with. And yeah, usually that's the good place for the Eclipse carrier to just go up there, put a gas canister up by this uh, left door and just that will, with one gas canister, you will basically complete that whole, uh, uh, whole room. Here is also one of the places where the drone often gets caught. Uh, this time it doesn't seem to. But yeah, it can get caught in those two doors and just not follow you. And then yeah, you just have to deconstruct it and and just deal with it that way. And just wait out the cool out, cool down to get a new one. Here I will always usually go up this left side. I uh, I really like this position. Nothing spawns here directly. Uh, they don't have a spawn on this uh, upper left side where they do on the right side. As you can see, they spawned from uh, the end of that. You, you see that, that those two. And and here you're pretty safe. Uh, they do spawn uh, underneath you, so they can come up from a ladder that is here. But yeah, you will see them coming, especially since no fog of war is on. It's not hard to have keep up some awareness and uh, kill everybody that way. I will show actually also this. There's a chest underneath us. I'm going to deconstruct all my skills. There's a chest here that a lot of people uh, seem to have missed. Uh, there's also one other one actually coming right up that uh, I know that barely anybody knows because in matchmaking I always actually pay a little bit of attention to where people go and if they loot. Of course some people don't care about loot anymore or don't loot at all. They have their build that they run. But I'm always in need of resources and such so I will still always loot. And also sometimes you get interesting thing. There, one grenade takes care of everything. And this is this chest back here. And through that tunnel, and there's a chest here. And yeah, I know very few people know this because I will always usually be the last one here and I will like peek at them and see, does anybody ever go there? And uh, it's quite rare that somebody takes a left and <laughs> goes for it. On the right here, we will have, uh, there's two resources there, but I won't grab them now, just save some time. And I always like this uh, this view here. It is very, yeah, it is one of those views. It's very, now it's a little bit foggy and rainy, but especially in uh, in the sunlight, it is, uh, it is one of those views, just looking over to, uh, Whatever they're cooling, probably can't to the main uh, uh, you can do to disable uh, the Manhattan. Trust me, it'll be fun. Blow that up. Actually, here I'm also going to use a grenade launcher because they start pretty packed. It was a lot less spawn than uh, I'm used to again. <laughs> Just uh, four enemies in total. Like yeah, as you should see with those shield guys, I just shoot them in the leg. And yeah, that's what you should do as well. Uh, you should never shoot them in the shield, really, unless... unless sometimes their feet are a little bit covered by something but yeah usually you just shoot them in the legs um depending on their uh, their veterancy so if they're red uh, reds and purples will stagger quite quickly uh, elites will not stagger as quickly but they will still stagger after but they may take seven or eight shots before they stagger but they will stagger and once they stagger, you basically, they, uh, their shield goes to the side of them and uh, you can shoot them in the head or in the face. Uh, there's also, uh, there was a backpack there. There's also a backpack over there that, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go out of my way just for backpacks. Resources I will go out of my way for, uh, resource uh, containers, but not so much, just those. I will actually keep my shock rounds. I'll jump down here, put my drone... Uh, if I can on that sniper, it did actually. So drones and such will often ignore your commands a little bit. This time it did uh, decide to listen to me. Sounds like another great and golden opportunity to me, Agent. I'm going to place the explosive. This is going to destroy this, make it so that we have two objectives up front where you see them. To shoot out, I'm going to shoot out both. 
And I'm going to do here what I actually don't usually do for these kind of runs, but what I do do in um, Heroic if I'm running a turret drone hybrid, and that's put my turret up there. Because one wave spawns up there, it can shoot the wave down here and can shoot the boss, of course. I'm just going to go for the chest on the boss. I could uh, go for that quick kill tactic again, but here uh, doesn't matter much. And these enemies will just die like that. Put myself at health gate, so I'm just going to heal up a little second. Usually for those enemies on the right, I would have already blown up the that little uh, flame barrel there, just so to make it easy for myself. They would that would CC them basically, and we're just, just sight of going through the last waves there. And yeah, I don't think I will equip that one at the moment or take the time to equip it. I'm going to deconstruct my turrets, just put them on cooldown. And if you're ever wondering why there are these many long corridors and such, that's actually for that. Uh, for cool, they built them in basically to have your a spot where you can cool down your skills, basically. So here we have uh, we have that closed door that gets opened by me shooting that yellow junction box. It opened up. One thing that a lot of people haven't figured out yet is what this is for. And let me show you. And this uh, starts up uh, that uh, ball machine over there. It will start shooting out balls. If we destroy three of these balls by just shooting them, which can be sometimes hard because uh, they do go into those clouds and make it hard to see. Uh, I think I did four actually. <laughs> but yeah, you only need to hit three. Uh, we, we have confirmed that uh, at times. That will open this door at the back here. And this leads to into one extra crate here. So if you were ever wondering what that ball machine was for, that was for that. That door would not be openable unless you had shot three of those... Uh, of those... Um, um, baseballs. We are also going to just pop the echo real quick because same as a watch it will give us uh, or same as a phone it will give us uh, some XP. And we're going to push in here. I'm going to grab my grenade launcher again. Try to catch everything. I did everything from that door that leaves just one sniper on the top right there. They are hiding and uh, yeah one trick you can do is you can bounce grenades. So and in the same way that I showed you in the masterclass for Eclipse, uh, you just bounce it off the ceiling above them. You don't have to direct impact or try to get them in a hard way, just bounce it off the ceiling right on top of them. Because yeah, that sniper will usually just be in cover for quite a while before they peek and be annoying. And yeah, we are basically, this is the halfway point of uh, Stranded Tanker almost. I'm going to move up here. This is also a ledge that is very handy to know, even on Heroic, because yeah, you move up to that position. You see that I've thrown my turret pretty far forward. I can shoot uh, to those uh, right walkways as well, and I can shoot enemies coming down the here. And the placement of my turret especially will make it so that um, so some of these rushers and such will try to come up for me, but they will get shot in the back by my uh, by my turret. Like this guy, he would have yeah. If I hadn't seen him coming, my turret would have killed him. I'm going to use another grenade round because I see two stacked up there, and that makes them a nice and neat target for me to do that to them. Yeah, we're just making good time, and here we have another cleaner box, and of course I still have no keys. In the coming corridor, there is also a little uh, smaller secret, one that I do know, a lot of people know, because... Uh, it's getting opened more often and often and that is that there is uh, you can see actually so on the on the minimap first you can see that when i move all the way up here there is uh if you look in the upper left there is it shows that there's a room basically there and yeah if you basically go like follow this yellow line you come to a somewhat hidden junction box right there and when you blow up the, that junction box it will open that you can open that door and in here is a gear uh, gearbox. And that one is actually pretty easy and quick to get, so I usually will, even on heroics. 
it will take you just seven or eight seconds to get it so and yeah all boxes within missions are scaled uh, that wasn't always the case that got changed uh, a long time ago but uh, still a few people don't uh, know that yet here again uh, so this valve together with a second valve i'm heading to will open up uh well won't open it up but uh, that flame will then go away letting us open up that door which also has a gear gear chest behind it so it was that uh, on the bottom right there was where that other valve was then i'm going up here and hitting this one this one i won't usually go for on heroics just because it takes a little bit longer <laughs> and I will usually go up uh, where I am here and I will look over and if someone goes for that one I will go for the other one um, and then once you've hit both you you can come up here and interact with this and this will give us uh, another piece of gear now coming up this part is a little bit different actually than it is in heroic I actually kind of <laughs> I do like the way it is set up in Heroic, which is uh, where you fight a few of the heavies, and especially if somebody rushes ahead, it can actually be an annoying fight. Uh, usually, most teams will just camp them around here and just make it a very easy fight. But here, you will actually see that uh, this part is actually a little bit different. So I am going to try to uh, catch these spawns just in the doors. I didn't do the best job, but I took a few out, made that fight a little bit shorter. Yeah, while well, leveling like this, use your specialization weapon, on, especially on story difficulty, they are very powerful. <laughs> uh, all of them, uh, all of the types. And that part is a little bit different, but this part especially is very different than how it is in Heroic, because here you have actually waves down there. But this is kind of shooting fish in a barrel, so I can kind of get why they changed it, perhaps, for Heroic. But, yeah, it is... Uh, you may have not seen this in a while, if you uh, haven't watched Alt in a while. So we're just shooting these uh, barreled fish. Picking back up my turrets and just moving on. One thing as well. So here we are interacting with these. Um, with these. I'll actually come back to that in a second. But yeah. Those uh, yellow crane uh, boxes or just uh, movement machinery boxes. It is actually quite odd the way that uh, we interact with them. Uh, I'm actually going to toss my turret up there. This guy doesn't really pose a threat, even if he reaches up to me. We aren't on heroic again. It's it's. A lot of people still play these. Uh, I, I see that as well, just with my friends and stuff. <laughs> we have to sometimes remind people of just like, yeah, you're not on heroic. Just play it super aggressive. We're we're even if and also even if we die, we don't get reset to the start of the mission. We just get reset a little bit back. There's a resource there, but yeah, I'm good. <laughs> that one is too far. <laughs> Where you know others have been further and I've gone for them, but that's just. Here, usually, there is a heavy, even with two men. Okay, there isn't a solo. And after this one, I'm actually going to deconstruct uh, both of my turrets and my drone. My drone actually timed out on its own. But yeah, here again, uh, pay attention to where I actually interact with it. I will try to place the camera a little bit. But you see my character hit that top button, that top red button. In any of these machinery things, that red button, the only thing it would ever do is stop everything. It would never cause movement. Like that is <laughs> the inverse of what a button like that would do. They are stops. They are basically the button that you press when somebody gets caught in something and you just need it to stop immediately. So us moving <laughs> both of those. Uh, so in the other one as well, the animation is always that you interact with that uh, red button on top of it. So yeah, it is a bit weird that we're interacting with the exact button that we normally would definitely not be interacting with. 
So I got an ACR there. Uh, it should be, I don't remember if we entered this mission at 33 or 32. So the drops are going to be the same level as the enemies from the cases and such. That is not the case. So the cases will drop at your level, but enemies are scaled to when you enter the mission. So if I were to level inside of this mission, this drop would have been 32. It isn't, it is 33. I will actually take a second to, uh, Oh yeah, and also put a silly skin on it, just because I never get to see this skin, because even when I use an ACR-based er, um, ACR weapon, I use the ACR-E, which is the better variant of the ACRs. So yeah, I never get to see this uh, silly little toy-looking <laughs> uh, skin. And here again, there is another cleaner box, and uh, yeah, we still don't have cleaner. But yeah, most of the missions have one or two in them at least. Well, uh, yeah, tombs had to. This has to. Um, I'm trying to think of if what pathway and Wall Street would have, but maybe that's not. We'll deal with that when we get there instead. Here, there will always be a heavy. There will be two with four man even. So, again, I'm just going to shoot out that backpack part. Actually, while he's going through his animation of taking off his mask, I'm just going to focus other things because he needs to take it, that whole animation needs to finish. It's not when his head is kind of exposed, but it's actually when the full animation finishes when you get to shoot him. I'm going to move up here and that's just for me to aim my turret pretty well. So I want it a little bit off the ledge so it can also shoot things directly underneath that ledge. We're going to get two of those? Yes. Okay. So yeah, we have only two of them. The crane has stopped already. And I will actually put myself here. Uh, so here, there, this isn't a good place in heroics. You do have one fallback over there with those blue... Um, blue uh, barrels but yeah you're a little bit exposed once they spawn on your right side here but i know that uh, on story mode they don't until we actually go after conley once the conley sta spawn uh, or the the valve happens and we get to spawn conley down here that's the only point when uh, uh, the spawn there happens and i'm going to guess that that is also going to be the case for solo because Usually, it's even less uh, spawn. But yeah, here we have now the point that we can interact here. I'm opening my turret and my drone just thin the numbers a little bit, which they are doing pretty effectively. I'm going to assist them. And yeah, so once we've done that, the gas has come out around Conley. We can just uh, shoot that gas. It's always a little bit finicky. Usually you need, yeah, like that, just to spray and pray a little bit. And I'm actually going to push up here, and just because it's solo scaling anyway, I'm going to expect that I can basically take her down uh, in, before she can do me any harm. So one annoying thing is, once her health is gone, she's basically dead. She just has her whole, yeah, whole spiel like that. And she needs to go through that whole animation. But while she's that, uh, she's still actually an, an, an in-world item, basically. And that means that my turret and my drone will try to shoot at her. He always drops... Um, I was, was going to say percussive maintenance, but that is not the item that she drops. It is Anarchist Cookbook. And uh, that is a wicked, the perfect wicked backpack. Just going to grab some loop while we head towards securing... Uh, it's just going to be one enemy left. Her watch dropped uh, in the middle for some reason. Fire, yeah, we have uh, ended uh, Connolly. So that is actually her whole uh, manhunt. Uh, and that's... Um, no, we should actually... I, I was checking the time real quick. Uh... We still have, we can do the start of pathway and maybe actually uh, reach up to uh, the safe house there. I'm going to skip this cut scene. This one is unskippable, but yeah. So at this point we have done two lines of the manhunt. We need to do the other two lines of the manhunt uh, still are remaining. And then we can, uh, uh, that together with Camp Clinton will be required and level 40 will be required to go after Mr. Keener here. <clears throat> so this means that um, 
having completed this, as you saw pop up there, Castle Clinton unlocked. That is also the reason I do these two first. So these two lead into each other pretty well, as you saw, because from the police station, I just run either to the safe house or to here uh, and do these two. But you basically just need to do two of the manhunts, complete them completely, and that unlocks this Castle Clinton, which is also a required mission for uh, Liberty Island uh, to, to start Liberty Island. So this is the only side mission that isn't part of a manhunt, but is required. And I do it this way because then the third path, which we are going to go down now, uh, which is hunting uh, Kajika, um, means that he has a side mission here, which leads into that. And actually, we are likely going to do do exactly that. We're going to do the pre-side mission, the safe house, and then um, uh, his uh, required side mission to unlock pathway, and then castle clinton and that'll likely be our cutoff point and we'll go probably 15 minutes over or something but that i think is a good place to stop um so yeah we're going to make the walk there so if you were getting carried what the carrier could do even if it's a friend or if it's um if it's with somebody uh, that is shepherding you you can just ask them just type and ask hey can you fast travel for us to uh, the safe house and usually most more experienced um shepherds will know what you mean they will already be know what you're doing basically <laughs> when they see you uh they will inspect you, they will see what your playtime is, they will see that you have characters already that uh, have completed, um, that have a watch, and then, yeah, it's, it's a little bit obvious what you're doing, basically. If they see just you have one character and it has 20 hours, 30 hours of playtime, then, yeah, they can guess that it's your first run-through, and they will treat you a little bit differently if they are, you know, smart shepherds. There's all kinds, of course. One thing I'm going to do actually in a second is actually equip that perfect Wicked backpack because um, Wicked is a total weapon damage on uh, whenever you apply a status effect in any form. So in my case, I shoot a lot of uh, weak points and a lot of those weak points will give uh, status effects. I am actually also going to pop here just to see what weapon we get. We get an MPX. So I am actually going to equip that even though it is with uh, with uh, Eyeless, which... Um, isn't uh, the best talent, uh, but it's a it's a talent. And also, purple weapons will do more than blue weapons. So whenever you can equip a purple weapon, um, yeah, uh, it is just going to be higher base damage. So if I had a blue, um, if if I had a blue um, uh, sick, it would have lower base damage, and you could just see it from there. Uh, I'm considering between these two, and I will actually equip that uh, Sokolov piece because, yeah, I am going to use this uh, this MPX. Even though I really always dislike the MPX without fast hands, as it does have a very long uh, reload time, which is uh, even longer without uh, with the mag as well, and without any watch point of 2.6 seconds there. It's not as bad as a uh, Carbine 7's uh, 2.7, but yeah, it is... Uh, quite a long reload it just i am someone that uses uh fast hands a lot and yeah not having it is always a little bit painful but but we'll live it's it's the content isn't that hard and you saw me take this route uh, which is basically going through that alleyway but just yeah for the few crates and a few resources up there uh it's likely not even faster than going uh one street down going to basically uh, around that block but uh yeah as i said as well earlier uh, i want to have uh full resources i'm actually going to check how full i am so i'm around 200 ish now i want to have the full 500 on this character uh, by the end of it just because that makes it easier to get those uh, projects done i don't have to actually go hunt the resources then and here it's along the way anyway in a second yeah we can scan this turret that lets us move up one thing i'm going to do here is i know where they exactly where they spawn i have six grenades available there's going to be uh, three or four maybe on solo likely then usually this is four with uh with uh two man but yeah, that was three with uh, me being solo. And yeah, one grenade launcher <laughs> took them out all the way. Now we're heading to the safe house. We're going to grab that. 
and we're going to start moving towards that safe house. Now, of course, you could go to the map and just mark them. Oh, actually, here, Isaac uh, auto marks the next uh, <laughs> next one. But yeah, I, after a while, also, you'll just know, know the route. Okay, that was... I heard a call out, but those were allies coming out of a grate. I also, yeah, I heard, uh, heard the sewer open up. I'm going to go over here and grab this phone real quick. And you know what? I'll grab that chest as well. And here we're making it oh, another transmog, which <laughs> is still a ready. And yeah, you it is kind of worth it uh, going through these and getting uh, those transmogs, which you see like in the so in the bottom left. This being this light blue means that is a it's a transmog item of that. And um, five eleven backs backpacks have uh, something crazy like twenty variants. Uh, all of them are different colors only. But yeah, the, getting them all takes a while. Uh, I will also actually grab. So I talked to the community leader that unlocked the safe house. Well, the safe house was unlocked when I walked in, but that unlocks the next part of this investigation. I will actually grab that. I see that I've gotten a uh, proficiency cache just from that uh, drop. And I did get a commando. I am going to swap these two in place. I'm going to put the commando here. And that's just because I know that an, um, a high-end weapon, even though it is not my favorite, because I, the way I'm going to use it is actually without a scope, with just this mag and just uh, maybe some accuracy and some stability. Uh, actually, I'll have crit chance here. Um, it isn't uh, the best weapon, but just because it is high-end and at this level, it's going to be, just as base damage-wise, it's going to be very powerful. I'll equip that wyvern piece as well. And yeah, I'm going to equip gear mostly towards my weapon. If I don't have any good gear for that uh, slot for weapons, I will. I'm not averse to putting in a piece for my turret and my drone, basically, which that wyvern piece was. And yeah, we're going to make our way towards the next part of this investigation. I'm going to go down here and grab this weapon crate because, yeah, we did get a purple AR, but I actually will stick with that MPX. Uh, I don't mind the AUG. Well, <laughs> I don't mind AUG in the same way I don't mind the ACR, but I wouldn't choose to use it. Uh, but uh, the MPX is actually likely better. This is also going to be all mid-range anyway, this uh, coming fights. On the left here is going to be... Um, Oh, there's a high threat enemy patrol. Uh, there, on the left here is um, Echo. I am going to hit that as well, of course. Just get the XP from it. And yeah, all of these small, because that was like 6, 6, 6k XP, I need uh, 560 to level. <laughs> so it, a lot more. But yeah, they, they do add up over the course. And especially here where I'm doing it solos, where I'm not group scaling. So if you were group scaling, you would be fine. You wouldn't actually need all of these uh, extra things. You can just get carried, do all of the mandatory parts, and uh, you would be um, level 40, likely before even doing the last required side mission, the, whatever path you go, you would be, you would have more than enough XP, basically, if you're getting boosted for an entire run. Gonna grab that phone over there. I am actually going to just quickly check uh, how long in we are. We are a little bit long in the tooth, but um, we are. I am actually going to continue. I think it's going to be very natural to end it at the end of uh, uh, Camp Clinton, because um, or after this side mission, either or. Uh, I will check the time after this one again. Here, I will actually use a grenade launcher on them and a grenade launcher on them. And yeah, here you see how effective uh, on story mode the grenade launcher is. So yeah, definitely use it. Make make use of your specialization weapons and stuff. And also, yeah, use what... And here again, I will... Yeah, I killed seven people there, I believe. Look around, Agent. And I took care of two waves with two grenades. And... Well, there I knew where they were going to spawn and how they spawn, but yeah, now you've seen it as well. So next time you're there, uh, pop a grenade there, 
pop a flame, um, pop a grenade launcher there. If you have the sharpshooter, pop a grenade there. That was a purple military G36. I will actually quickly check what it was. It was with Optim. I will equip that or no, not that one, that one. And I will actually quickly give it that, uh, that, and that, and that. And as you can see, I always, so I keep to my <laughs> uh, method of always having crit chance mods on my weapons. So I will go for 15 crit chance on the weapon plus the mag. That is usually also my setup for all weapons and should also... With a few exceptions, of course, if you need the, the tech laser, the technician's uh, pulse laser, then... So there is something I actually quickly shoot out a yellow junction box through this through this window that opened that door back there. And then I shoot out this lock, which gives us access to here. Nancy. Who the hell is Nancy? I am going to put flame runs in the G36 and I'm going to use the MPX. I just quickly check what that talents were. Yeah, we're making good time uh, through here. We'll grab those resources there as well. Here we have one lone enemy that just spawns here and tries to intimidate us, but uh, we'll we'll just intimidate him back. <laughs> Even though that was my glass grenade, I'll fill back up uh, in these fights. As yeah, you do get a lot of kills. There's a lot of enemies, and that means that your um, easy, group specialization bar, uh, your group specialization ammo bar, bar fills up pretty quick. And if you don't know what that is, it's actually maybe it, uh, it is a little bit difficult for me to point out because it's on the HUD, but it is that bar on the left uh, that is uh, that segmented bar, that orange segmented bar. Every time I make a kill, that fills up one more. Once it is full, the next enemy I kill will drop ammo and it will reset. So there you saw it fill up all the way. I killed that enemy. There I killed one enemy and it filled up to one. That's how that one works. And yeah, it is, it is basically so next to my ammo count, to the left of my ammo count, is that bar. And every specialization has an extra thing that it can do to fill up faster. So for in the case for demolitionist, uh, getting multiple. So if you get uh, a multi kill with grenades or a multi kill with explosions, so mortars and stuff as well count for that. Then you get uh, several more points. So every double kill basically gives a. Uh, extra points into it which you can do with your grenade launcher but you can also do with uh if you're uh have the mortar or are doing an explosive build and have uh with seekers and such basically any explosive one of the more common ones that really uh really uh helps getting a lot of uh, that ammo well actually there's two one is that uh, firewall players whenever they're in proximity of an enemy when they die you gain actually uh, two points i believe so you gain one for the kill and two extra for uh, from your specialization perk for survivalist any enemy that dies uh, to the player of the that has survivalist <clears throat> so not just any enemy that dies while status affected but uh, if they die to them they will add also points into that that bar um and yeah, that's going to happen a lot, especially if you're running it on a Eclipse. Here, you have to just interact with this one and you can walk out and then you have to walk back in for to get that mission completed. A lot of people believe that you have to watch the whole thing. Here, Isaac is trying to get us to uh, go that way. So he's there is a pathway there, which is the normal way of getting outside of this mission. So you go back to the start of where we started basically but instead of going there we're going to go to as i said after this side mission to camp clinton and the reason for that is so this door back here also opens up once the mission is complete and camp clinton is uh, right right down there as, as you can see you can kind of see it in the distance uh, just uh, in the in the background there so yeah it makes total sense to pat it like this just making sure that this is the third one that we do so that we the third manhunt that we do because or 
third or later to have Camp Clinton unlocked and the other two make sense just as they just flow into each other basically so this is usually the path that I go down Parnell first Vivian after then we go after Kajika and then uh, finish off with Dragoff I am gonna grab ammo here not that I'm very low but just gonna grab it I'm going to set my turret and stuff there I'm going to take the high ground just to put my turret here and also stay in the high ground. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to our left. Okay, so yeah, there is a named... Here often uh, there is a named group that you will... Uh, <laughs> so my turret and my drone will likely engage it uh, incidentally in a second. And... Uh, yeah, I usually do kill them. If you're planning on keeping the character, you definitely should uh, do it. So if you're doing it for an actual alt that you're going to keep and for... Uh, more loadout slots or just having extra access to more raids and such then I would definitely recommend doing all of these named ones because if they die and uh, you do not get their card that means that uh, they basically get um, there's a list that the game keeps in the background they do get uh, tagged off that list so the game doesn't go out of his way to spawn them anymore but you will still need the card and that is a very common thing for to happen to people that there's one card that they are missing or two and uh, the game just isn't spawning them for them. And what I'm saying they aren't spawning them for them is that normally the game will go out of its way to try to... Uh, what, so whenever you reach uh, one of the areas that a named enemy can spawn, um, the game goes out of his way, it checks if one of the people in the group at least needs, uh, still needs one of the enemies that it hasn't been uh, tagged off its list, basically, and it will spawn from that pool. So, uh, and the only thing that is a requirement is that they go on a cooldown every 30 minutes. So usually you can just go and uh, try to... Uh, get one every 30 minutes if you're still after those cards but yeah if you mess up in that way basically so they die inside your world but you did not pick up the card which yeah can happen because they sometimes sometimes group members have killed them maybe you were at the white house and uh, they were out in the world and they killed them or even sometimes they will die uh to just enemies that are around uh, i will toss my turret up there they will die just to enemies they will fight other enemies basically and they uh, they might die that way Leaving contaminated area. Power. So yeah we're headed into Camp Clinton already we've done the pre parts of it the outside parts system activated. here we assist our ally Before they get to kill everything and here we'll, in a second, we'll have the prompt to interact with him. That spawns the last two waves of uh, in here. Yeah, as you can see, uh, so Eyeless is actually helping me uh, get my uh, Wicked proc as well. So every f uh, three kills, four kills. Uh, it's the normal variant, so it, it, it applies that uh, blind to them. So that is also helping me trigger Wicked as well. But as well, I'm just going to do stuff like that, where I try to set enemies on fire with their own grenades and such. And that will be enough to keep up Wicked quite often. But those blinds, uh, they aren't hurting anything. And also all of those status effects, uh, so Eyeless, Ignited, uh, Sadist, all of them are actually very strong talents. Uh, they're actually wrongly worded. Uh, they are amps. They're worded as um, weapon damage, I believe. But they are actually full-on amps. And uh, yeah, so that enemy that is blinded, in this case, by eyeless for me. Oh, also, you can just run through here. A lot of people go all the way around. Completely unnecessary. Uh, you just move up here. I'm just going to grenade those three. Just get the numbers down easily. And uh, just kill these last few. 
So once this last enemy is dead, we're going to interact here, which is going to start a timer and goes uh, find the defensive position. I'm going to deconstruct my drone. It will be back up uh, <laughs> right as we start this fight. You don't, there's, this is just a timer. There is no requirement to go anywhere. This isn't a gather, so to say. Um, and I'm just going to stay close. I have SMG. I, there's no reason for me to go for range. One thing I will do is at uh, two seconds, I will toss a grenade that will likely blow up uh, when they uh, when they enter and my turret's gonna or my drone's gonna come out of uh, cooldown uh, right away I was hoping to basically use that to proc uh, uh, wicked wit but I'll do it here instead with that gas and yeah by the time I actually look around again my turret and drone have taken care of that heavy Echo reconstructed. I'm gonna grab that loot it worked we need to interact with this echo but you can also instantly just run away you don't have to actually watch it and that uh, concludes that mission and this one so this one is a required mission again for uh, for having access to liberty island at level 40. so what we have left here is a pathway we still have the whole new york line left or uh, the whole uh, wall street line left and uh, we shall do those uh, in the next run likely most likely we will do most of it and then we will be uh, saving uh, a side mission and liberty just for one final video and yeah i hope you uh, enjoyed this one i am going to warp us to the safe house in the meantime and um I hope uh, that you join me for the next one as well, where I uh, ramble on even more while we uh, finish off Pathway and then uh, head into the Wall Street, uh, the financial district zone. And actually for the financial district zone, so because I will, so I am level 36 now, likely by this end I will be level close to either, either I'm going to check actually, I'm likely going to be almost level 37 by the end of Pathway, either or 37 or almost. Once we reach uh, the safe house and do uh, Wall Street, I will be almost uh, close to 38-ish. And then uh, by the side, the last required side mission after Wall Street, uh, halfway into 38, which is because I did do a few of the activities. I just killed a few of the elite patrols along the way, as you saw me do. But yeah, that still leaves one level basically that I need. And what I'm going to do for that one is actually the project is not here yet. We will get it once we reach the safe house of uh, the financial district. And that will give us one of these. And that is to get the SHD caches, do some activities and uh, resupply a control point. And to resupply a control point, we would of course need to capture a control point. I'm going to do that project there. And that's mostly because uh, the project in, in Financial District is the easiest. Because once we have the safe house, we get access to it. Uh, at that point, I can just quickly grab all of the SHD uh, caches along the way. And we will grab uh, this uh, territory or uh, this... Um, control point which will also be a, a quick warp to uh, liberty island if we need to go do any other uh, activities after as likely afterwards we also still have the option of doing the two side optional side missions which is one going to be a, a bank uh, that is around here and a, a supermarket that is or a mall kind of setting that is uh, up around there and if those are required i will do those and uh, show those as well uh and uh, yeah we got one more cache at level at that level i will actually pop it show what the contents were i will actually equip uh no actually i will uh, not equip it because uh the seska is more important and i have a fast and banji so that will definitely get equipped i'm going to gear it up mod it up have crit chance on everywhere and uh yeah I uh, hope you uh, join me for the next one. Have a good night.